All right, let's see if we can find the limit of one over square root of two sine of theta over cosine of two theta as theta approaches negative pi over four. And like always, try to give it a shot before we go through it together. Well, one take on it is, well, let's just, let's just say that this is going to be the same thing as the limit as theta approaches negative pi over four of one plus square root of two sine theta over uh, the limit as theta approaches negative pi over four, make sure we can see that negative there, of cosine of two theta. And both of these expressions are, if these were function definitions, or if we were to graph y equals uh, one plus a square root of sine, a square root of two times sine theta, or y equals cosine of two theta, uh, we would get continuous functions, especially at theta is equal to negative pi over four, so we could just substitute in. We say, well, this is going to be equal to this expression evaluated at negative pi over four. So one plus square root of two times sine of negative pi over four over cosine of two times negative pi over four. Now, negative pi over four Sine of negative pi over four is going to be negative square root of two over two. So this is negative square root of two over two. We're assuming this is in radians. If we're thinking in degrees, this would be a negative 45 degree angle. So this is one of the, one of the, the trig values that it's good to know. And so if you, have, if you have one, so let's see. Well, actually, let me just rewrite it. So this is going to be equal to one plus square root of two times that is going to be negative two over two. So this is going to be minus one. That's the numerator over here. All of this stuff simplifies to negative one over, this is going to be cosine of negative pi over two, right? This is negative pi over two. Cosine of negative pi over two, if you thought in degrees, that's gonna be negative 90 degrees. Uh, well, uh, cosine of that is just going to be zero. So what we end up with is equal to zero over zero. And as we've talked about before, if we had something non-zero divided by zero, we'd say, okay, that's undefined, we might as well give up. But when we have this indeterminate form, it does not mean that the limit does not exist. It's usually a clue that we should use some tools in our toolkit, one of which is to do some manipulation here to get an expression that maybe is defined at theta is equal to, or is, does not, is not an indeterminate form at theta is equal to negative pi over four, and we'll see other tools in our toolkit in the future. So let me algebraically manipulate this a little bit. So if I have one plus the square root of two sine theta over cosine two theta, as you can imagine, uh, the things that might be useful here are our trig identities. And in particular, cosine of two theta seems interesting. Let me write some trig identities involving cosine of two theta. I'll write it over here. So we know that cosine of two theta is equal to cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta, which is equal to one minus two sine squared of theta, which is equal to two cosine squared theta minus one. And you can go from this one to this one to this one just using the Pythagorean identity, and we, we proved that in earlier videos in, in trigonometry on Khan Academy. Now, do any of these look useful? Well, all of these three are gonna be differences of squares, so we can factor them in interesting ways. And remember, our goal at the end of the day is maybe cancel things out that are making us get this zero over zero. And if I could factor this into something that involves a one plus square root of two sine theta, then I'm gonna be in business. And it looks like, it looks like this right over here, that can be factored as one plus square root of two sine theta times one minus square root of two sine theta. So let me use this. Cosine of two theta is the same thing. Cosine of two theta is the same thing as one minus two sine squared theta, which is just a difference of squares. We can rewrite that as, if this is a squared minus b squared, this is a plus b times a minus b. So I can just replace this with one plus square root of two sine theta times one minus square root of two 
sine theta. And now we have some nice canceling, or potential canceling that can occur. So we could say that cancels with that. And we could say that that is going to be equal, and let me do this in a new color. This is going to be equal to, in the numerator we just have one, in the denominator we just are left with one minus square root of two sine theta. And if we want these expressions to truly be equal, we would have to have them to have the, the, the same, if, if you view them as function definitions, is having the same domain. So this one right over here, this one we already saw is not defined at theta is equal to negative pi over four. And so this one, in order for these to be equivalent, we have to say that this one is also not. And actually other places, but let's just, let's just say theta does not, does not equal negative negative pi over four. And we could think about all of this happening in some type of an open interval around uh, negative pi over four if we wanted to get very precise. But if we, for, for, for this particular case, well, let's just say all, everything we're doing is in the open interval. So in, in open interval, in open interval between theta or say negative one and one. And I think that covers it because if we have pi, if we have pi over four, that is not going to get us the zero over zero form. And pi over four would make this denominator equal to zero, but it also makes, let's see, pi over four also will make this denominator equal to zero because we would get one minus one. So I think, I think we're good if we're just assuming, if we're restricting to this open interval, and that's okay because we're taking the limit as theta approaches something within this open interval. And I'm being extra precise because I'm trying to explain it to you and it's important to be precise. But obviously if you're working this out on a test or notebook, you wouldn't be taking, putting, or taking as much trouble to be putting all of these caveats in. So what we've now realized is that, okay, this expression, actually let's think about this. Let's think about the limit, the limit as theta approaches negative pi over four of this thing without the restriction of one over one minus square root of two sine of theta. If we're dealing with this over, you know, in this open interval, uh, or wait, actually even even disregarding that, theta, this theta, it, or this expression is continuous at it is defined and it is continuous at theta is equal to negative pi over four. So this is just going to be equal to one over one minus the square root of two times sine of negative pi over four. Sine of negative pi over four. Sine of negative pi over four, we've already seen is negative square root of two over two. And so this is going to be equal to one over one minus square root of two times the negative square root of two over two. So negative, negative, you get a positive. Square root of two times square root of two is two over two is gonna be one. So this is going to be equal to one half. And so I wanna be very clear. This expression is not the same thing as this expression. They're the same thing at all values of theta, especially if we're dealing in this open interval, except at theta equals negative pi over four. This one is not defined, and this one is defined. But as we've seen multiple times before, if we find a function that is equal to our original, or an expression that's equal to our original expression at all values of theta, except, except where the original one was not defined at a certain point, but this new one is defined and is continuous there, well then these two limits are going to be equal. So if this limit is one half, then this limit is going to be one half. And I've said this in previous videos, it might be very tempting to say, oh, well, I'm just gonna algebraically simplify this in some way to get this, and I'm not gonna worry about too much about these constraints, and I'm, then I'm just gonna substitute negative pi over four, and you will get this answer, which is the correct answer, but it's really important to recognize that this expression and this expression are not the same thing, and that what al allows you to do this is, is the truth that if you have two functions, if you have f and g, two functions equal, let me write it this way, equal, equal for all x except for all, all right, let me just write it this way, for all x except for a, then the limit, then, and let me write it this way, 
equal for all for all except for all x except a and f continuous continuous at a then then the limit of f of x as x approaches a is going to be equal to the limit of g of x as x approaches a. And I said this in multiple videos, and that's what we are doing right here. But just so you can make sure you, you got it right, the answer here is 1 half.